Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the fundamentals of material plasticity to be used in Abacus VUMAT. Let us take a look at the type of material nonlinearity. We have metal plasticity, soil plasticity, rock fracture mechanism, and etc. In this video, I will focus on metal plasticity because it is simple and straightforward. The first question that pops up is when does plasticity happen? To answer this, we should know what a yield surface is. We know that under loading a material exhibits deformation containing elastic and plastic strains. If the material is in elastic range, we will have only elastic strains, which are retrievable. Else, we will have plastic and elastic strains together. A yield surface is a boundary that separates these two phases. Why do we call it a surface? In 3D dimension, we need a surface to properly define plasticity. From now on, I will focus on the von Mises yield surface due to its easy calculation, resulting in the same outcome in compression and tension. Consider a piece of metal that is subjected to a tensile test. The material follows the OABF path. If I zoom in on the OABF path, I can get the diagram on the left. Having extracted the plastic strength, I can plot the diagram on the right. Why am I doing this? Because I can easily calculate the hardening. Note that the EAP differs from the ET. In practice, the mixed hardening occurs, shown by the dashes here. Hence, the isotropic and kinematic hardening are theoretical. Nonetheless, calculating the mixed hardening is complicated due to the Bauschinger effect. Therefore, we use isotropic and kinematic hardening in our calculations, which simplified mixed isotropic models. Now the one Mises criterion. The equation for the yield surface is as follows, as you can see it here. Note that the sigma hat differs from the simple yield stress obtained from the tensile test. Sigma hat depends on the equivalent plastic strain, which I will explain it later. Furthermore, S is the deviatoric stress tensor and alpha is called the back stress. Sigma hat controls the shape of the yield sur surface while the alpha locates its center. For isotropic hardening, the former equation is reduced to the following. You can see that the back stress is eliminated since the J2 invariant is equal to the half of Sij Sij. This criterion is also called the J2 criterion. Indeed, you have figured out by now that the center of the cylinder is stationary and it gets bigger in every cycle. For kinematic hardening, the equation is transformed into the following, in which the sigma y is the exact yield stress drift from the tensile test, also called the virgin yield stress. Some important notes. In isotropic hardening, the yield surface does not move, contrary to the kinematic hardening. Perfect plasticity can be implemented in both hardening models, and in some references, the slope of stress plastic strain is shown with the italic H leather. Now we get to the last part of our review, the equivalent plastic strain. As I said before, sigma y is the function of equivalent plastic strain, which can be calculated using the following equation. Let me tell you why we are calculating the equivalent plastic strain. In general, the obtained plastic strain is a tensor or in void notation, a vector. Hence, its calculation would be challenging and complex. On the other hand, the equivalent plastic strain 
is an integer which facilitates the process of calculations. It was proven that to obtain incremental equivalent plastic strength for mixed hardening, we should solve the following equation, in which the sigma PR is the predictor stress or the Mises stress. Now we transform the equation to be used in kinematic and isotropic hardening. For kinematic hardening, the following equation should be solved. Note that we can solve this equation directly. And the new stress components can be determined by the following equation, in which sigma m is the mean stress and nu is the flow tensor. For isotropic hardening, the process is similar. Nonetheless, the equation for equivalent plastic strain should be solved uh, numerically using the newton roxon scheme, for instance. And the new stress tensor could be determined using the following equation. Note that we don't need the alpha or the increment of alpha for isotropic hardening. Here are some references that can be used for further readings. If you found this video helpful, please support me by liking and subscribing to my channel. Take care.